Hey everybody, welcome to the video, welcome to the channel. My name is Mike and we're continuing the dump truck build where we're taking two parts truck and trying to make one truck out of it, a single axle dump truck. We got this truck for free, it's an F350. It had the 460 gas engine in it, it had that bed on it and the engine and transmission were good. So we pulled the engine and transmission. Actually, we got tons of videos on it. You can watch those and get caught up if you want. The main thing you need to know is this was a diesel truck. So there's quite a bit we've got to swap over between the two of these rigs to try to make something decent out of it. Now, here's the disclaimer. I'm not a mechanic. I just can't afford one. And I definitely can't afford even a used old F-350 or Super Duty single axle truck. So we're just going to try to build one. Two reasons. One, well, I already told you the first one. I just can't afford it. And the second one, I've never done anything like this. So I'm just kind of enjoying the ride and trying to learn something in the process. Let's get started. goal in this video is to get the last of the stuff we need out of that truck to go into this truck to make everything work the way it needs to with the engine and transmission we're gonna be putting in there and with a little bit of luck that could include cutting out some of that floor and using it in here this floor has got a few weight reduction spots and this rig well it's got a lot of weight reduction spots but surprisingly the spots that are good over here and around the transmission tunnel are the parts that are bad over here. What we're going to do is just start taking parts off this truck that are still in decent shape that I might be able to save because most of it's still interchangeable and compatible in case anything ever happens to it. I'm talking about some body panels, some mirrors, some doors, brake booster. I know I got to get these out of there. We're just going to take anything that's decent and worth saving off of this rig for salvage. We're going to start with something easy like the mirrors because that truck doesn't have any. Hoping it's like a confidence booster thing, you know, like, gee, that was easy. The rest of this is going to go swimmingly. One mirror. This is going to be easy. See, that's called false optimism and it gets me through most of my days. Yeah, that's one way. Let's go here next. They're actually not in the worst shape. And if we ever introduce that front end to a tree, it might be handy to have them. All my batteries are dead. What do you think down? Down behind the door somewhere. Oh yeah. Yeah. See it in there? Deep down in the guts of her. Okay. There we go. And where's the other one? Somebody really put this dump truck bed in the way. Yeah, I'm telling you. It's right in the way. Closer. I feel like we're still missing one. Is it underneath? Huh? How much do you charge for that at the junkyard? It's like a savings account of, of sorts. Should have done that from the get-go. Imagine how much easier the engine would have been. Hood brackets, and why not? I mean, if anything, it's a hinge I could use on some kind of project. Ground strap, might as well. Especially considering this one was just cut when they took it off. Let's go ahead and slap that on there for now so we don't lose it. This setup's a little different, so we're just going to go ahead and swap it real quick. It 
it's got little dimples. These holes are different and I just kind of slapped it there. But then I noticed there's these little dimples right here that I would guess are for the factory when they're assembling stuff. That way they know where to put things. Because this one has the same dimples. And then there's the two that the vacuum hoses on that diesel would have went to. Just using the powers of observation. They don't always get me there. But they'll get me close enough sometimes. I was sorting through the comments and I saw some comments from a fellow that looks like he knows what he's talking about. And he said, make sure to take that piece off and clean out from behind there because it builds up with dirt and it'll rot out behind there. And I wasn't 100% sure how to do it, so I said, let's just do it on this truck. So if we mess it up, it's not too big of a deal. Well, I see what the feller's talking about though. There is a heck of a mess behind there. We're just going to be done with it. Okay, there. Nice. It's in really good shape. And we'll run these doors next. And they got some rust. They're not the best, but they're also not the worst. The glass is still there. The mechanism works. What we got? Does this how's this? Oh, look. Huh? I mean, I think there's still some good parts worth hanging on to here. Plus, it doesn't take too long to zip a door off. We got one, two, three, four, five, six. Not bad at all. Huh? Not too bad. Just fold that out of the way. We'll go ahead and pull all the pedal mechanisms out too. Just start, work our way across. Looks like these are gonna be on this side of the firewall. Super easy access now though. Trying to get the cable out of the mechanism there. So close. Nope. Don't lose it. There we go. And then that clip there gets pushed out the bottom. There we go. There we go. Fairly positive this feller is going to be important. He says the first inertia switch. Uh, made in England. I'm pretty sure that's got to be plugged in for the engine to fire. I think it has something to do With the truck wrecking and then shutting the engine off automatically. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I bet my money It's crucial. So let's get that popped off there and then we'll do the rest of the brake assembly One thing I have learned is that the extension really takes away from the hit of the impact But sometimes the fella just doesn't have a choice to put it on there And hope that it's enough So they look to be identical, but the one out of the free white truck actually has this sensor here for the clutch. And this spring assembly looks to be in better shape on this one. So I'm just going to go ahead and swap it over and then we know for sure we're good and we'll save that one for parts if we need it ever in the future. Another thing an awesome subscriber pointed out is this brake booster and this one operate just slightly differently from each other. So I do need to swap those out, which is convenient because that's what was on the back side of that pedal assembly. The other thing I need to swap out on here, as far as the power steering goes, here 
and here are similar enough. From what I can tell, the biggest difference is that on this assembly, this line comes from up here, where on my other assembly, that runs straight to the pump, I believe. I could be wrong. What I'm getting at is I need to swap this line out with this line here. I could be completely wrong on that in the long run. My approach here is the square peg goes in the square hole. The good news is I'm taking all the components off of that white truck and we'll have them. So if we get to that point and I'm wrong and I'm missing something, we'll still have everything we need. Let's try to get those brake boosters swapped over, some of those lines swapped over, and we'll keep going on getting this thing torn down. So I'm hoping that's all I got to change over to make that work. Like I said, we'll find out at some point, won't we? Good enough for now. All right, out with this. There we go. I need to get these broke loose. Should have done that while it's still attached. Probably would have been a little easier for me. So in theory, hopefully that's everything we need as far as the brake booster and the steering goes. We're gonna leave it out for now because of what the eventual next step will be. Like the 27th step from now, maybe. But I got all the keepers where they need to go. We got this ran together, the nuts on, and this little nut here for this bracket for the brake lines. And it's all still together. It doesn't look the best on the bottom, but the brakes did work whenever we were driving it around. Well, they kind of worked. But like I said, I do want to go ahead and pull this so we've got it. Very nice. Try this column the rest of the way. I don't know if this is how oops this works or not, but we're gonna try it. Now what kind of magical thing happens? We just pull it out. Huh? Is that all we do now? Alright. We'll try it. Oh! Magical. Beep beep. Now I'm going to take this section of this harness. Uh, the wires are all cut towards the back end, but I've got the harness connections up here. We can rewire the back end. But it'd be nice to have the actual harness connections from the front. Oh, easy, bud. We're going to try to get this bench seat out of here next. Oh, now we're doing something. Hold on, man. Hold on. Okay. Oh, my gosh. It's like a party back here. There's all kinds of accidents. There are rare occasions where I feel a bench seat is actually a bad seat. They're just handy to have around and they're not a ton of money to have repolstered. What's holding me up back here? A seatbelt sensor? In this economy? I don't think so. I don't think so. Nope. 
Just gotta pivot. I gotta pivot here. And I got this one loose, so I'm gonna get it drug out. Look at that, it came with some extra body paint under the seat. Now that is handy. We'll have to use a torch, or the, maybe the plasma cut, I don't know. Something other than that, because I'm not gonna sit there and fight those, but I gotta get these off, because they go right here on this one. So let's just go ahead and see if we can get these off and at least get those out of the way. There we go. There we go. So it is a beautiful new morning. I installed this nice anti-burn coating on everything. We're not gonna save the windshield. It's got a big crack all the way along there. See it better on this side. I don't really feel like saving it. And we're not gonna save this because, well, after watching several YouTube tutorials on how to remove the back glass, I failed that class. Ouch. You know, sometimes I just like to set money on fire, I guess, and that's fine. Um, everything else is metal. Let's get the plasma cutter. I'm gonna be running this Vever plasma cutter. We got her hooked up to the air, and this is a new tool for me. This is something a lot of people suggested getting, and it wasn't necessarily something I needed, but I was looking for ways to speed up the work that I do, and a lot of people suggested it, so I got it. Played around with it last time. I had a few struggles with it, and I think that's because I had it hooked up to 110. I went and read some reviews, and a lot of people said the same thing. It's pretty worthless when it comes to 110. It's definitely got to be on the 220 or 240, whichever you want to call it. So I picked up a 240 extension cord so I can run it 240 off of the Miller Legend welder there. And then, of course, we got her powered by the old Vever air compressor. Nice. Now, like I just said, it's a new tool, so it's a new thing for me. This is not a how-to. I'm not giving you tips on how to use this thing, because I don't know how to use this thing. I watched some YouTube tutorials. I sent some text messages out for some advice. Let's see if we can fumble our way through it. What I'm wanting to save, whatever the floor pan I can get, I do want to cut a big old sheet out of the top of this roof, just because it's a big old sheet of metal. And I want to save that back metal. Same reason, it's just a big old chunk of metal. Everything else, the corners and all that, is going to go in the scrap pile. We got everything up top. I just gotta come under and trim these cross members a little bit.
what is rust jacking? Here's your textbook photo. This is rust jacking. Isn't that something? It's like that on both sides. Pretty wild. definitely have to say this the plasma cutter is awesome it's not something a fella has to have but if a fella's got a few extra bucks man can it speed things up but just like when I learned how to use an oxy acetylene torch to start doing that I spent a lot of time cleaning tips I'm gonna go through a lot of tips on this and I'll show you what happened to me so that air compressor tripped and I didn't catch it and I lost air and ended up frying my tip I realized that's what was happening. It came with an extra set of tips. I put the extra set of tips in. Same thing happened again, and I fried both my tips. That outlet is only the outlet is only a 15 amp outlet, and it keeps tripping. So lesson learned there. I definitely have to pay attention to the airflow and make sure I got good power supply for that compressor and I got good air coming in. That is the big difference maker. What I've learned so far. Because if I don't, because if I don't, I ruin a tip instantly. But I have to say, for the little time I got to use it today. This thing is great, and the more tricks I figure out on it, the more useful it's going to become. But that does mean we're down to the grinder to finish everything off on this, and maybe the 555, maybe a little grapple action. So I'm hoping between that roof metal, that roof metal, that back piece, and what we've got there, we can piece together enough of whatever we've got to do with this floor here. This section's all pretty solid yet, but we definitely have our work cut out for us. I think we got enough metal to do it though. I say let's put this semi hydraulic third function kit with Dirt Perfect's grapple to the test on the old Ford 555 backhoe. It's like a NASCAR sponsorship listing here. I'm gonna let that battery charge just a little bit off the truck. All right, we're waiting. While we're waiting, See if we can't get that buzzed off there right quick. There we go. What is that, Mike? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. But it looks important. Do have a manual for this truck from Ford for the engine, the whole truck, the whole everything. And I think most of it will translate over to what we're doing there. The only catch is I got it on a CD because it was like 25 bucks. If you order the book set, it was like 250. Then I realized nothing I have has a CD player. So I've got to, um, I got to get that figured out. I think I can get one that adapts in or plugs into a USB drive so then I can have access to that manual. But that's going to make things a lot easier on us, I think. The last big thing is still these mounts and they're giving me a little bit of a fight. And I just noticed these on this side, uh, those are riveted on. I don't know how well you can see that. I'll tuck in like that. 
I reckon we just have to cut those. I made the assumption there's just those one two. I did not see those two down there yet. And then those see that bolt and that bolt you can see the holes on the frame you gotta get that rivet punched out but that will ride right up in there and those bolts will go into the existing frame on that mount same on this one although there's no bolts there but the holes are there that'll slide up in there Pretty cool, so we got those mounts. I think I've got everything off that truck. Surely that backhoe battery is all juiced up and ready to go. Let's do something a little more fun. This is one of my favorite parts of the project. One big step of it has done. Everything we could get out of, on top of, underneath of, inside of, off of that white truck is done. And it's out of the picture now. And everything we need to get off of this to make way for what has to go into it to accept that 460 is off for the most part as far as I know. And we got a relative cleanup. The bed is staged in the spot where it's gonna be rebuilt at and the truck is moved and everything is set up and ready for the next step of the project.
which is going to be tackling this floor mainly because we've got everything we need we got the metal we got the little welder we got the time and hopefully we got enough propane to get a little bit done on this the only downfall is i don't have any more tips i've got some order but i don't have any more tips for the plasma cutter so we're going to be doing cut off wheels but that's fine i'm okay with it next video right back on this i've never done it before and that's okay we're going to get it started and we're going to get it figured out. I definitely appreciate you guys stopping by and checking this video out. And I hope you subscribe to the channel. I hope you're liking everything we're doing. Hopefully, I'm lucky enough to catch you guys on the next one. So you can see how this whole thing turns out. Well, the floor anyway. <laughs>